As a professional dancer, actress Robia Scott skyrocketed to international success as a young age, touring with uh, the late singer Prince and guest starring in hit TV shows. So why did she give it all up, that glamorous career in Hollywood, and walked away from it all? She'll share with us today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's good to be here. Okay, so you were a dancer with Prince. Yes. Professional dancer yes. with Prince. You've been on television. Mm -hmm. You starred in TV shows. What, kind of talk about your life at that time and then tell us what, what provoked you to walk away from it? Well, I started a professional career at 16. Mm -hmm. I started dancing. My first job was a music video with Debbie Gibson. And so I was doing a whole bunch of music videos back in the 80s with big permed hair. Uh -huh. You know, I had the whole 80s look down. Uh, and then I, I was um, called to meet Prince and he wound up hiring me for one music video, and that turned into the album cover, Diamonds and Pearls. You know, he hired two girls, me and another girl, and decided uh, after we worked together for just a few days that we would be the muses for the album. Mm -hmm. So we were on the cover, we traveled the world with him, wound up working with him for two years. I retired from dance at 22, because I sort of felt that I'd reached the pinnacle at 22. Really, so that's the pinnacle in Hollywood? Well, or in the dance world? I felt with Prince, I, yeah. I, I had done so much at a young okay. age, and I thought, what am I gonna do after this? So mm -hmm. I really felt a draw to acting. That was like the next step. So I um, started auditioning for shows, uh, got Beverly Hills 90210, and then I was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer for a mm -hmm. couple years. And then it was during my time on Buffy the Vampire Slayer that I became a Christian. And you came out of, what, New Age? I did. I came out of the New Age because where I was... Uh, where I grew up in Southern California, that is really the most prevalent when you're seeking and searching for mm -hmm. God. And I was always seeking and searching for God. I was always looking for deeper truth. So, you know, I like the story that you share in your project about you going to a casting call or something like that. And um, someone had, I am, tattooed yes. on her neck. Yes. So tell us about that because that kind of struck your interest in God the true God. It did. I was seeking God and I said, you know, I want to know you. I, I don't really understand the whole born again Christian thing. Mm -hmm. I felt like I knew God, but I didn't know Jesus. And I was, I was just exploring. So I went to an audition one day and there was a woman and she had really short hair and uh, she walked across the room and I, I followed her and I noticed that she had I am tattooed on the back of her neck. Mm -hmm. So just to strike up conversation, I thought, oh, well, I asked her, is that I am like positive affirmations like you do in the new age? Is that I am the light? And, and she said, oh, no, no, that is I am the great I am of the word. That's who God says he is. She reached into her purse. She pulled out a Bible. She started ministering to me. All the girls in the waiting room started to get uncomfortable because as soon as you say Jesus, mm -hmm. people get uncomfortable. Right. So eyes were rolling, but she was dynamic and animated. And, and she wound up, uh, we chatted. I said, you know, I'm looking for a church. I kind of am checking this out. Do you have a church? She's like, I do. So she took me to this amazing church, African-American church, thousands of people and just my little head sticking out, you know, <laughs> gospel music, mm -hmm. amazing. And, and I stayed there for a while. I just, I, I went for months and at one point something clicked and I just knew, I didn't understand the whole Bible. I didn't understand everything the preacher was saying, but something resonated and I just knew that this was true mm -hmm. and there was something here for me. Prior to that, I, I'd imagine that probably even gave you the foundation to write your new project, Counterfeit Comforts, mm -hmm. Freedom from the Impostors that Keep You from True Peace, Passion, and Purpose. What are some of those comforts that keep us from God? Well, for me, even though I was incredibly successful and in living the dream, really, mm -hmm. there were things on the inside that I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a chain smoker, couldn't get free from that. I was dealing, like most women do, with body image issues and um, just tormented with food and my weight and how I looked. And then being a dancer and an actress just exaggerated that. So uh, for me, my main counterfeit comfort was food running to food. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment in prayer where I was just like, God, help me. How do I get free from this? Even though I'm a Christian, I'm still in bondage. Why am I still in bondage? And the Lord spoke to my spirit and he said, food is not your issue. You're really using food as a counterfeit comfort. Mm -hmm. So when you are dealing with emotional things or wounds from your past, mm -hmm. instead of coming to me, the true comforter, and allowing me to, to nurture you and heal you, you're running to a counterfeit. And the more you run to that counterfeit, the more you're in bondage to that counterfeit. And we all have counterfeits, cigarettes, oh. alcohol, excessive work, excessive mm -hmm. uh, exercise, uh, shopping, you know, and not all those things are bad. The, you know, counterfeits right. aren't bad. Food is a blessing. Those things are all good. But it's when we become in bondage to, to those things because we are looking to them to 
uh, alleviate pain, to medicate, to deal with an issue that those things can't deal with. Now, were you really overweight or was that? Oh, no, no, I was never oh, overweight. Okay. I was never mm -hmm. overweight. Because I, it's never about, really about weight when you're using it to substitute for something else to fill a void. For me, uh, it wasn't, you couldn't see what I was going through. Okay. It was internal. Mm -hmm. I was always thin, I was always fit, but it's where I lived on the inside, tormented about food overeating, not eating, binge eating, um, just not living in that place of peace. What would you say was the root cause of all of this that was happening? I mean, was there something in your past that, you know, had you kind of stuck there? Yes, I think as I really went into a deeper place of prayer and I allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me into mm -hmm. all truth and show me what was deeper because what God spoke to me about, he said, when you're trying to deal with counterfeit comforts like food, that's just a symptom, that's just a fruit right. of a root. So if you try to deal with the fruit, you're not going to get much healing. Mm -hmm. Healthy roots, healthy fruits. So for me, he took me just into a deeper journey of my past and my childhood and my parents being separated and abandonment and, and being in the industry I was in, constant rejection. And, you know, really the areas of not knowing my true identity in God. Mm -hmm. So things would happen. Someone would do something. I wouldn't get a job. And those feelings would come up. Who am I? I? I don't feel good enough. I don't feel worthy enough. Maybe I would have a breakup with a boyfriend and it would hit those deep wounds. So then how did you actually walk through this process? Well, you, you, you said you had deep moments of intimacy with God mm -hmm. where, you, where he was able to show you. For women who are watching, and this is just not a female no, situation issue. No, this is not. This is for everyone. This is for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, how can that person jumpstart that process of coming out and recognizing the imposters in our lives? Well, the first thing, really the essence of this book is teaching people how to get into that intimate place mm -hmm. with God because I think a lot of us, we're striving and trying to change ourselves kind of by the flesh. You know, right. we're trying to stop these behaviors. We're trying to be more Christian and not be angry and not be offended and not be in bondage. But it's really through connecting with God in an intimate way. And what I'm so passionate about is teaching people how to have firsthand revelation with God. I find that so many believers love God. They go to church. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, we're listening to other teachers, and that's wonderful. We glean a lot in our Christian walk from what other people have experienced and what they've gone through. But that is, should not be the entirety of our whole Christian walk. Secondhand revelation is a piece of how we grow, mm -hmm. but firsthand revelation, when God Almighty talks to us. You know, a counselor could have said counterfeit comforts to me. Someone could have said that to me, but it didn't have the impact when I said, God, you talk to me about me. And he'll do it. And he will. He had my answer. So uh, the essence of this is to help uh, all believers get into that place where they can hear from God. Mm -hmm. So that when you start this process, then it means the person has to, would have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Well, Christ. that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely the beginning. You know, for me, before I was a Christian, um, I was really into a lot of self-help self-help books, which uh, later God kind of spoke to me and showed me that that's a complete oxymoron mm -hmm. because with self-help, you're looking to yourself to help you, but really yourself is the problem. And you can't help yourself. No, if myself knew what the heck it was doing, <laughs> I wouldn't be in this mess in the first place, right? That's so, right. Yeah, so you need something higher than yourself. So really the first step is connecting with God. And I think some people, like I was, I, I had a religious idea of God. Is he going to judge me? Is he going to shame me? Is he going to, um, is he all, you know, hellfire and damnation? Mm -hmm. But really, um, that's not it. You know, I, I learned that God just wants to um, love me, nurture me, show me things so that he cannot point a finger at me for being a sinner or being bad, but he wants to expose things lovingly so that he can set us free. You know, things. there is so much to unpack in your project, Counterfeit Comforts. We're going to have Robia back to share more about her new project. To connect with Robia, go to robiaministries.org or visit harvest-tv.com for a link to Counterfeit Comforts. Coming up later, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel, but up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's motivational message. We'll be right back.